and by that time the snow had replaced the cold rain and it was so deep that I had some anxious hours before a kindly farmer led me a sleigh so that I could be drawn into camp. Every year that I came in, the soldiers were there to greet me and uh, the general, and I had very happy news to warm his heart that terrible day in winter. They suffered so much that I can have no words to describe their sacrifice. But I have continued to be their best friend. I was shocked and very dismayed during the presidency when many veterans came to visit us at the president's house and told us how much in need they were. So I took it upon myself to write to the ladies throughout the new states and ask them, can they form committees? Could they help to raise monies wherever they heard of a veteran? And I'm proud to say the ladies have come through, as they always do. And what I call my new fundraising is a great success. So leave it to the ladies. I, I always like to add, by the way, uh, in case you're unaware, that General Washington never had to be reminded to remember the contribution of the ladies throughout the war. And even in peacetime, he is always had a great respect for women and their great strength and sacrifice and duty. Without the wives and mothers and sisters of the enlisted men who went along with the army, they kept it on its feet doing the laundry, the cooking, the sewing, the nursing. And uh, there was no lady in all those years of the war who ever sat idle-handed. We were making shirts and knitting stockings for the soldiers. When I was in the camps, I would send out word for the local ladies to come to what I call my sewing circle. And there we would make things for the soldiers. Our needles always flew when we had to come to hit one another. And of course, you know, without the ladies, the general's most successful efforts at what the French call the espionage, do you take my meaning? I could never have been successful. Ladies learned to hang their laundry on the line with certain articles to send signals and to sew messages under the covers of buttons and to listen in whenever their towns were occupied and they had to serve the, the officers at table. Or as in the case of Lydia Darrow, when they took over her house, she made sure that she snuck onto the landing when they couldn't see her and listen to everything the officers were planning, then herself in the dead of night rode to our forces to warn them. So without the ladies, we could not have gone on, and the general does appreciate them. Forgive me, I, I know we have some fine gentlemen.